friends in the last lecture we have discussed like uh, your mode of operation what is the need of balancing circuit in the today lecture what we are going to see is look at the type of biasing circuits okay the type of the dc biasing circuits okay the type of dc biasing circuits before that so we'll see what is the requirement actually what is the requirement of this type of biasing circuit so just like a recap the first thing is your emitter base junction should be forward bias and collector base junction should be reverse bias this is a very important condition to work like a, to make your transistor to work in the active region okay the next thing is when you take a common emitter circuit can you know your the output current will be ic and uh, vc will be output voltage so before you are like uh, applying a ac analysis we will be doing a dc part right so you will be drawing the dc load line and we want to fix the operating point so this will be a cut off region this region will be a saturation region and this part you will be getting a representation like this right so this part will be active region so while you are choosing the caution point you have to be very clear you want to choose the caution point in between the cut off region and the saturation region not very close to the saturation region or not very close to the cut off region it should be in the center approximately then only you will get the proper swing at the output okay so if you choose nearer to the saturation region like the positive part of the signal will keep it out so similarly if you choose nearer to the cut off region like here like a negative portion of the signal may clip out okay so that leads to the non linear amplification so something like this your output will be something like this but your expected output is you should get a full swing okay so the second requirement is this is a temperature stability it should be more high what do you mean by temperature stability because you know that the term when temperature is changing so there will be a you can see the more changes in the vb and icu so that is because of the material property because the reverse saturation current is changing with respect to the temperature so you know uh, like we studied right for every 10 degree celsius uh, the reverse saturation current will double like a vbe it will uh, decrease by 2.5 millivolt per degree celsius so like a, what is the temperature stability here so the temperature stability in the sense how stable how stable your ic and vc remain constant even when temperature is changing so that determines your temperature stability okay it should be more high okay in order to give the perfect bias stabilization circuits okay like a, the third important thing is the operating point your operating point or q point it should be independent of your transistor parameters it should be a independent of your transistor parameters transistor parameters okay this is a very uh, like a, a requirement of this biasing circuits so now we will see what is a like a type of biasing circuits which are going to discuss in the today lecture the the first thing as we are going to see what is a base resistor biasing base resistor biasing and second we are going to discuss voltage uh, divider biasing 
so we have other techniques like a connector to base bias and a modified modified version of your base resistor bias base resistor bias so you have many circuits okay but we are going to concentrate only on this two type of technique and is a like a what is a working pins block base resistor and what is the working pins from divider biasing so we we'll start with the base resistor biasing okay so here you can see the circuit so this is a fixed biasing uh, circuit the other name for fixed biasing circuit is single base resistor biasing circuit so here you can see here your rb is a very important the based on, see based on the changes in the rb the quotient point also will be changing so you can see here the quotient base current is established through the resistor rb okay in this the the main drawback in the circuit is this fixed bias circuit is there is no like a uh, feedback in your system so the problem in the ic is not addressed if temperature change your ic will be tend to change but uh, like uh, how you can keep a uh, stable okay that problem is not addressed in this fixed bias circuit if temperature change your ic will tend to change but what is a uh, uh, like a uh, uh, what is a feedback system or uh, uh, like a uh, uh, no feedback system are introduced in the circuit to keep your ic stable that is a main uh, drawback in this circuit okay so that is a main issue here so when you look at this first circuit this is your source signal and this is your capa coupling capacitor and this is your uh, power supply power supply is given to the two resistors rb and rc and this is your input like a base current and this is a collector current and this is your base emitter voltage and this is your collector emitter voltage so when you are doing a dc analysis what is a dc analysis so d when you are doing the dc analysis you want to consider your ac signal there is a source signal to be considered as a zero first assumption the second assumption the capacitor to be considered to be the open circuit you know the reason because in the like in the dc condition the reactance of the capacitor will be infinite is larger so mathematically it is considered to be the open circuit because in the dc part the frequency is zero because signal is it is stable it is not varying with respect to time so the like reactance is also going to be a zero you like by considering this formula now if is zero like a 1 by 0 is going to be a infinity the reactance is large because of this part okay so the main drawback the fixed bias in circuit is that is a changes in the ic is not addressed it is a main drawback in the circuit okay the what is the advantage if you see the what is the advantage it's a like a uh, like a simple circuit like uh, i can change the operate i can change the uh, operating point by simply the changing the value of rd okay but the the problem i said right the the stabilization of operating point is very poor in this type of circuit because the problem with the ec is not addressed that is a main issue in this type of circuits okay now we will see the equations okay how like a biasing equation that is helping you to solve the problems okay so like uh, this is your dc supply and this is your uh, ib and this is your rb resistor and this is your vb and this is your output like a uh, ic collector current and this is your vcq so you can see everything is it is in the capital everything is the capital because you are doing the dc biasing you are doing the dc biasing right you are doing the dc biasing so that's why it is everything is given in the capital letter so first uh, like a uh, we will uh, apply the equation or uh, we will see how this rc is coming okay so you apply the kvl in this output side okay you apply the kvl in the output side so what you'll get see if this is something like this right minus 2 plus so plus vcc 
entering at a plus leaving at a minus so minus ic rc entering at a plus leaving at a minus so minus vc equal to zero so from here i can find ic and rc that is uh, your requirement that is a problem statement you want to see and based on that you want to find rc nice nice anything you can find this vce anything you can find okay so here you can see the rc is the uh, uh, like uh, they are modified and they get rc equal to vc minus vc cube by ic cube that's it so you know the another uh, very important relation your ic equal to beta times of ib okay that you have to be very clear then we will see how this input uh, this equation is coming so here you want to apply the kvl in the input side okay you want to apply the kvl in the input side so when you apply the kvl so it will get plus vcc entering at a plus leaving at a minus so ohms law i into r here i b into r b minus v b e equal to zero so what is i b i b will be v c c minus and v b e and divided by r b r r b you can find by bringing i b down so so that just you need to know how to apply the cable so that you can play with this type of equations okay so here you can see like i b equal to v c c minus v b on and r b so you have another relation also like i c equal to beta times of i b so here see this substituted the like a uh, your uh, supply voltage told and v b e is 0.7 so always you take it as a 0.7 okay like a uh, even if it is not mentioned in the circuit you take it as a 0.7 as a uh, like a fixed one and r b it is given in the problem so you, is, you are getting like a 10 microamps it is unchanged value it's a uh, 10 microamps which you are getting now see let me take like a uh, beta is 50 100 150 now what is the observation which you are going to see here is if beta is changing like a, how your caution point is going to change like i was fixing here if you change a beta from 50 to 100 how it is going to change like a, how much that is a, a like a difference you are getting okay that you can uh, see in this end of your uh, problem so when i am uh, substituting your ib here Like uh, in case of beta is 50, you are getting IC is 0.5 milliamps, and you substitute here VCC and your obtained value here that is a uh, 0.5 milliamps, and RC it is given in the problem, so you will be getting 9 voltage. In the same case, so so consider your beta is changing like a uh, hundred. So in this situation, you are getting IC equal to 1 milliamps, and VC is 6 voltage. so you can see there is a huge variation respect to the 50 100 150 so there is a huge variation 9 6 3 so this is a huge variation okay so the caution point is not fixed over your changes of your ic current so this is a uh, main this is, this is what i trying to say to have a poor stabilization in this type of fixed pair so good so this like a uh, the problem is you don't have a feedback system in this fixed pair so good the next circuit which i'm going to discuss is the voltage divided by a single circuit here in the previous circuit that is a single base resistor biasing that is a rb is a only element which is used for fixing your operating point but here the circuit was replaced like a r1 and r2 and r elements are newly introduced in this circuit compared to the previous circuit which, is, which we discussed right the r1 r2 and re so you can see you have a source signal and coupling capacitor and you have dc supply so from this circuit this dc coolant circuit is drawn so while you are drawing the dc coolant circuit you want to know like a your source signal considered to be zero and cc there is a coupling capacitor the reactance is considered to be a large in the dc biasing and it is removed this two assumption this circuit is coming here okay so another important uh, thing you want to understand here is that is an re the re is a is a feedback system in this amplifier circuit okay so the re is a 
what type of feedback is a serious feedback so why it is serious feedback because this re resistor is not directly connected to this input element it is indirectly connecting via this r2 so that means why i am saying it is a feedback means see you know the basic equation vb equal to vb minus ve okay so when the v is changing like increasing or decreasing the vb also is going to change when vb is changing your ib also will change so the changes of v is reflecting in your ib that is a input current so so this is a indirect feedback system which will affect your base current that is a very important in this divider biasing circuit another one the r1 or r2 this is a potential divider biasing concept i can adjust the voltage based on my requirement so the the primary thing here is the drop across there is a the fixed drop across this r2 is making your like a base emitter to work in the forward bias condition to work in the forward bias condition and if you look at this circuit here the current you apply the uh, like a kcl if you apply the kcl to this node so consider this is your i1 and this is your node so i2 and ib so that means your uh, i1 equal to i2 plus ib see here what you would understand is r2 resistance will be very very less compared to the your uh, base emitter uh, this part it is a 1 plus beta times of re resistance this resistance will be more more larger okay in that bits uh, like a uh, in between the base emitter junction okay so that means uh, like i can write like i1 equal to 10 times of ib plus ib okay that means more current will will uh, propagate a uh, move in this r2 resistance and less current will go to the towards the base terminal because r2 is very less resistance and here you have a higher resistance so that is the reason okay so now uh, i am going to convert this circuit into the thorn circuit circuit to to do the precise analysis to do the precise analysis in the sense i want to find a vb i want to find your and i call i want to convert this whole circuit into the one voltage source one series resistance and one load that is my ultimate aim. it is something like a thorn and equivalent circuit you know na? so the thorn and equivalent circuit how it will be you have a one voltage source and one series resistance and one load to find out what is the maximum current in the circuit right you have a one rth and you have one load and you have one vth so we are going to do that so what we are going to do is first uh, to find uh, uh, like uh, uh, to find your uh, vth remove this uh, vcc okay so when you remove this uh, uh, not remove just split this element so then it will be something like this right so here you have a vcc uh, this is r1 and this is your r2 and this is your towards the base terminal so you will be having like this okay so now if you look at this point uh, like a, i'll let me go for the next slide so same what i explained before see so that is r1 r2 so this is a uh thorns uh like a vb so here only i'm going to find a vb and vb is equivalent to the vt that is the thorn voltage so supply voltage into supply voltage into r2 corresponding resistance so this is nothing but the vcc into corresponding resistance divided by sum of the total resistance so that gives your vt okay that is your vth that is your vth that's what you have determined here now to find your rth what you want to consider is your voltage shows should consider to be the like a short circuited right so something it was uh, like this right so so that is r1 r2 okay so if you short circuit this voltage shows to find your uh, to find your uh, 
RTH. So this R1 and R2 will become parallel. So that's why the RTH it was written like a R1 parallel to R2. So by considering this methodology, that is to find RTH, you I want to short circuit the voltage source so that your R1 and R2 will become parallel. So RTH will be R1 parallel to R2. That's what it is written here. Then this complete part is your load. So now you can see uh, as per thousand equivalent, it was uh, uh, rearranged. So one voltage source, one thousand resistance, one complete load. This complete part is your load. This complete part is your load. So VTH, RTH, and complete part is your load. Okay. So with this we can uh, do the precise uh, circuit analysis when you are doing a designing part. Okay. So for, let me uh, we go for the uh, equations. Very important equations. So first, like uh, you want to apply the KVL. Okay. So I'll I'll draw here. Okay. When you apply the when you draw here, you have a VTH, and here you have a RTH and here you have a circuit. So with this I can explain you neatly. So we need to uh, like a, uh, we no need to move uh, to the back slides, right? So now it will become very simple. So VBE and this will be a VCE that's all. Apply KVL. So minus to plus. So what you'll get? So you'll be getting plus VTH entering at a plus leaving at a minus so minus ib rth then entering at a plus leaving at a minus so what you get minus vbe then entering at a plus leaving at a minus so you'll be getting ie r e equal to zero so it was replaced like a vth uh, like the all term the taken to the right side and it was written VTH equal to IB RTH plus VB on plus IE. So now very important IE is nothing but your sum of your base current plus collector current. Collector current. So we know that your collector current is nothing but your beta times of your IB. So I can write like a IE equal to 1 plus beta times of your IB. So from this only this equation was written. Okay, so I can substitute this equation here. Okay, here. So if you substitute, what you will get? So VTH minus IB RTH minus VBE minus. 1 plus beta times of uh, IB R E equal to 0. So you can take this IB terms outside. So if you take what you will get RB sorry RTH this you take to the left side. So it will be a plus 1 plus beta times of R E so in the right side you have a, a VTH minus VBE. So I want to find IB. So I can write like IB equal to VTH minus VBE divided by RTH plus 1 plus beta times of RE this equation you got. Okay. So now I will find IC. IC is a beta times of IB. So just multiply this equation, you will be getting this equation. See so now, see I am going to do some good approximation. See when you see this IC equation, you have in different on to the beta. Okay, so now what I am going to do is, I am going to take like a find an equation with independent to the beta. So that is very important while doing the calculation, like a designing part. Okay, so like when you when you see the circuit, 
see this is your uh, circuit and this part is your one plus uh, beta times of r okay this is your rth so the rth will be very very less when you compare with your one plus beta times of r okay so this is a, a like a is a very a primary requirement to pro, to get your uh, highest stability in the circuit that is rth should be lesser than your 1 plus beta times of re so if you consider this assumption what happened uh, already we know the equation was like a uh, ic equal to beta times of vth minus v beyond or by rth plus 1 plus beta times of re okay so with that uh, i have removed your rth so the rth was considered to be low considered to be low and i have removed this rth right so i have rth uh, consider is less than into less beta times of re with that the rth was removed from this circuit another assumption beta divided by 1 plus beta will approximately equal to 1 so something like you take a 100 1 plus 100 so it was something like a 0.99 so approximately equal to 1 so this now by considering the second assumption by considering the second assumption this equation was rewritten like a icq equal to vth minus vv on by re okay so this is your uh, equation for icq with independent to the beta so this is your uh, best approximation with independent to the beta variation for your icq so that is vth minus vv on by re okay so another thing another uh, important condition what you want to maintain here is like a 10 time of rth the 10 time of rth will be equal to the 1 plus will be equal to uh, 1 plus beta times of re to provide the highest stability in the circuit that means your rth will be a 0 0.1 times of 1 plus beta into re okay so this equations will, will be very useful when you do the designing of passing circuits okay so this is a very very important condition rth will be approximately equal to 0 0.1 times of 1 plus beta into re or 10 times of rth equal to 1 plus beta times of re okay so we will see one problem so the analyze the circuit the analyze the circuit using the voltage divided by S circuit and determine the changes in the quotient point with variation in which the circuit contains the emitter resistor so r1 r2 whole value is given here right so rth how you will find r1 parallel to r2 so 56 56 into 12.2 divided by 56 plus 12.2 if you calculate, you will be getting 10.0 kilo ohm. Then I want to find a VTH. So you already know what is the VTH formula. VCC into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So R2 is 12.2 kilo ohm divided by 56 plus 12.2 into 10. You will be getting 1.79. Okay. So already you determined the IB equation. I explained you by applying the KVL equation. That is VTH minus VB on divided by RTH plus 1 plus beta into RE. So you'll be getting this final value that is 21.6 uh, uh, microamps after plug in all known values. All values are known, just plug in, you'll be getting this 21.6 microamps. Then you want to find your uh, like your IC value, then uh, then IE value, no IE is nothing but a 1 plus beta times of IBQ. So just you want to plug in. So not a complicated thing. Just every values are known. Just you want to plug in correspondingly. So VCQ equal to VCC minus ICRC minus IERE. How you are getting this equation? See very simple. So draw the output path. So here you have a VCC and here you have a RC. Here you have a VCE and here you have a RE. Now apply the KVL in this loop. What you will get? plus VCC so plus VCC why I am saying you have to be very clear 
plus minus so it is going like this so leaving symbol i am taking so plus vcc so minus minus icrc this point minus vce minus iere equal to 0 so with this i can write this equation see now you can see i am taking the different values of uh, like a beta 50 50 100 and 150 okay but when you observe the change is very very small 5.67 4.81 and 4.40 but when you see in the previous circuit the here see you can see the change it was abruptly large right it was abruptly large you can see here 9 6 3 okay but see here uh, when you look at here the changes was very very uh, less changes was very very less 5.67 4.81 and 4.40 so in that uh, this system is designed with a feedback so that's why uh, the stability is maintained in this type of voltage order biasing circuit. So